Hi, this is Michael Benjamin Jacobson, or you may know me as Matthew Robert Payne. If you haven't seen me before, you don't know who I am. Uh, I've written 55 Christian books, so teaching the narrow way, the narrow and difficult way of Jesus uh, to the world. There's been about 60,000 people download my Kindle books. They're all 99 cents. I spent $110,000 of the Lord's money that he raised up for me. $2,000 a month, I wrote one new book a month for three years. I don't know if any author in the world has ever done that, produced 45 books over a period of uh, three and a half years. Uh, I did that, didn't get one invitation to any church. Uh, you know, five years ago, Bob Jones spoke to me from heaven. He said, the church, uh, you know, they won't be ready for your message for five years. Uh, you, you won't be uh, preaching for five years. And uh, they won't be ready. And uh, I think we're into a, about the three and a half year mark. So it could be a chance that uh, I'm not going to be speaking for the next 18 months. But, um, you know, God has me busy. You know, I've just, uh, you know, working on a book uh, that'll be like a New York Times bestseller and people have prophesied and been a lot of warfare around that book. And uh, I'm going to release that uh, hopefully in the next couple of years. Uh, but uh, I, I want to... Pretext this with a conversation I was having uh, last night. Um, I, uh, since the beginning of this year, uh, the angel over Australia has been living in my house. Uh, it tripped me up a little bit, freaked me out a little bit when he arrived, his four story angel, when he stands outside, he's a six foot seven when he's inside. And um, freaked me out so much that I reached out to Michael Van Vyman. He was too busy. He's an expert on angels. I, reached out to another expert on angels, Michael, some, uh, Micah, someone. Uh, he, he was too busy to talk to me, so I was freaking out, you know. <laughs> you know, it's pretty freaky when the, Australia, the angel of Australia says that uh, he's going to stay in your house from now on. And I was getting some high-level counselling for uh, multiple personality and uh, all sorts of struggles I had. I spent my next hour uh, of, of healing with them, talking about this angel and why is it there. And uh, they said it's got little to do with you dispatching angels. You know, the Australian angel knows how to answer all the prayers of the Australians and he's pretty busy, he knows what he's doing. She said, most of the job of that Australian angel is for your protection. I said, what does that mean? And she said, well, whatever's happening, uh, you need to be protected now. You've got enough angels around you now that no one can get you. And uh, later on, uh, a couple of weeks later, I was uh, talking to a young prophetess, and she's uh, very experienced, and talking about this Australian angel. She said, you're actually working with uh, the angel of the world, and um, he's uh, been dispatching a lot of your prophecies too. And, uh, and I said, uh, oh, okay. And he walked in the door beside me, and he said his name was Michael, and, I thought that was nice because my guardian angel's name's Michael and this Michael was nice and he said he was the angel over the world and he was going to stay in my house from now on. And uh, that freaked me out even more. And I spent 20 hours, uh, you know, with about 15 friends speaking on Zoom 20 hours straight, trying to process the fact that Michael the Archangel was in my house. And, uh, you know, uh, about four months ago, I started... Uh, dictating a book uh, from John Lennon in, a, in, in heaven. And, you know, 90% 90, 90 of the Christian church wouldn't receive that John Lennon's in the church in heaven. But he's dictated this 36-hour book that I'm working through and editing. And at that time, uh, about three weeks into it, when he was talking about the Illuminati and the truth about the Illuminati and the music industry and Hillary Clinton, who she is, um, you know, they dispatched thousands and thousands of assassins at me and uh, had that checked by my counsellors, by other prophets, and it's true that they sent uh, 15,000 assassins at me to take me out. And uh, so I, I, work, I walk in high levels. I, I'm working in high levels. Michael's here, you know, he's off camera, but if I turned the camera and he had the gift of sight, you could see him here. He's all, now, he could be in 5,000 places at once, like Jesus can be. He can be too. So I'm not saying he's not in heaven, but I know he's always here with me. Now, can't be killed, it can't be knocked off. You know, Jesus told me 20 years ago through a prophet that I'm not to kill myself. I was going to kill myself that day. And someone told me, I can't kill myself because uh, 
you know, I've got a job to do that. He's got no plan B. There's no one else in the world that can do your job. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I was going to go and kill myself and I threatened Jesus. It doesn't matter who you send to save me. I'm going to punch him out and jump off the, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And he told me that I can't, if I jump off the bridge, he'll raise me from the dead and I'll do my job from the wheelchair. Then I, I said to myself, well, I'll gas myself. And he said, and if, uh, I'll shoot myself. I thought to myself, and he said, that, yeah, and if you shoot yourself, um, I'll raise you from the dead and you'll live with my grave for the rest of your life. And so I thought to myself, I'll gas myself. He says, yeah, and if you borrow someone's car and garage and gas yourself, uh, you'll live with intestinal problems uh, for the rest of your life and be vomiting up. And you know, you hate headaches and you hate uh, intestinal problems and you probably wouldn't like uh, traveling around the world in a wheelchair. Listen, you are an Enoch to us and we'd love to bring you home, but like Paul, you've got to stay. And even though you suffer, you prefer to be at home, you've got to stay for your job. And there's no plan B, like that guy said 20 years ago. He didn't really believe him back then, but you've got a job to do. So that's just some research. You know, uh, it's like my doctorate. I've done my doctorate. I've got 55 books. The Christian church really isn't interested. No pastor's ever invited me uh, to preach in the church. I'm sort of used to that. I sort of know Bob Jones well. I've interviewed him in a couple of books and I've got a good relationship. He's not a familiar spirit. He really is true, you know, he really is. And uh, so I believe, you know, 18 months, I probably won't be released to the church to preach. He told me the church isn't ready for my message. The church doesn't want to hear my message. They've proved loud and clear with 60,000 copies of my books downloaded. Not one pastor in the world inviting me to preach. They've proven beyond, beyond clear that they're not interested in the message of Jesus. They're not interested in the narrow way. There's more profit in, uh, in preaching a watered down gospel. So with all that bearing all that in mind, I, I don't really expect a lot of you to uh, be inviting me to come and preach in your church, but there could be pockets of pastors who, who actually want a warning. Um, so two weeks ago, the Lord had me walk through uh, George Street and laid my hands on uh, a whole lot of buildings that uh, are gonna come down and uh, I was just telling him to lay down. I wondered if I had to cross the street and lay hands on the other buildings. And the other uh, angels that were working, walking with me were the angels that took Sodom down and the angels that took Egypt down. And the uh, same angels and uh, big judgment angels. And uh, they're four stories high. And when they were laying their hands on, they were laying their hands on four stories up. And so they're like transformers. They can go up and down, you know. And uh, so I, I'd met them on that day and, you know, a couple of weeks had passed and the buildings hadn't come down and sort of said, oh, well, was I delusional? And the good thing about me is I've got a mental illness and I can be delusional, but I learn things in my delusions. So, so it doesn't really worry me. So I just let it go and it's new. That's God's timing, you know. I went, uh, I had a, a cap on my head from an old church, uh, Salvation Army Church. It was called Street Level. And uh, he, they told me to take the hat and throw it in the ocean uh, at, in Sydney Harbour and they're going to turn the ocean to blood. So I threw the street level into it. As I was finishing putting my hands on the building, the hat blew off. I picked up the hat and looked at the name and it said street level. And that's where the buildings are going to go to, to the street level. And, um, you know, if you saw how many buildings, I don't know how many come down, but... I just get the feeling that it's going to be a whole lot more horrific than 9-11. A lot more people are going to die. And it's really sad that they are. But, um, you know, no one seems to want to warn the Australian public and no one seems to want to care. So, you know, I'm <laughs> doing my best, but, you know, uh, it's going to happen. Um, there's a prophecy uh, by Sunday, Sun, Sadhu Sundar Salvaraj. Uh, you may not have heard of him, but he's a very accurate prophet. He's always walking and talking and meeting angels and dropping judgment words, which aren't really popular these days, but they're the truth. He prophesied two years ago in Sydney that if you pass this same sex bill, uh, God's going to pour out his wrath on, on Australia, especially Sydney. He talked about blood in the water, bushfires and earthquakes. And uh, you know, Australian, you know, the, the, the hyper-grace churches preach this false gospel that God doesn't bring correction, doesn't judge anymore. So the church is lulled to sleep. And the day of the Lord is pouring out in Australia. People don't even know. Malachi 4 is pouring out. Jeremiah 23, Ezekiel 34. 
uh, Revelation 18, Revelation 11, you know, um, Joel, Amos, all the prophets are speaking. You can check my prophetic words that I've done just today uh, on, you uh, know, type in Australian prophetic word on YouTube and just have a look at the ones I've done today. God's got me going. So I was going to sleep last night. I was talking to the Australian angel and, uh, and I said, um, you know, when, when are you going to step up the judgment? 139 fires, that's pretty good, but I want a fire in every state. I want this whole country to burn. And uh, I want people to get the message that Australia's cranky. And he said, well, judgment over Australia is not my purview. It's uh, these uh, Sodom and Egypt angels that uh, you need to be talking to. I said, okay, see you later. And uh, I went to the, started talking to the angels that judge Sodom and uh, and uh, Sydney is spiritually called Sodom. If you ask Jesus, if you know Jesus, you can talk to him. Ask him if he, he calls Sydney Sodom and New York Gomorrah. Gomorrah is going to be wiped out with a nuke in, in, in the future. You, you don't know that, but the Illuminati know that. It's like Illuminati going to provoke someone to drop a nuke. That could be Russia, China, North Korea, or Iran. Uh, I don't know who's going to do it, but someone's going to drop a nuke on New York. What you don't know is the Illuminati plan to run the world from Sydney. And, uh, you know, Satan often has his plans, but God's going to take control of this great south land of the Holy Spirit. At the moment, he can't take control because the church are in bed with mammon. They're in bed with Baal. They're in bed with serving money, serving the lust of the flesh. They've got no message of uh, crucified Christ or self-denial. They've got a message of, you know, happy, wealthy, happy lifestyle. So because God's got great purposes, he's going to bring us straight to its knees. And you think 9-11 or any other judgment in the world was big. Hey, no country's been judged since Egypt. What's going to happen to Australia? Australia's going to really, really fall on its knees. And uh, so I started talking to the angel uh, over that uh, destroyed Sodom and destroyed Egypt. And, and I said... Um, you know, can you wind up the judgment, guys? You know, Australian church are asking for fire. Let the fire roll, roll out in the physical. Just burn every seven states. Just set it all alight. Just, you know, and start pouring out the Moses plagues that I prophesied. Start, you know, start pouring out the frogs and the locusts and the blood and everything. And they said, Matthew, you're a prophet. That's really good. And you've got a lot of authority and you're in the position, you know, you're speaking from the Elijah Moses sort of anointing, and that's good. But we only respond to the word of the Lord. We, we perform the word of the Lord. That's the proper protocol. And I said, so, so uh, you're not going to do it. And he said, well, we'll do it when the Lord tells us to go. You know, and you, you, do and you keep on obeying, keep on doing, keep on speaking, keep on doing what you're told to do. And we'll respond to the word of the Lord. And I said, all right, I'm tired. Have a good night. See you later. Bye-bye. And uh, I got up today and stayed up late last night to three in the morning and got up at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock today. Got settled. The Lord said, I want you to release a word. I released the word of 13 minutes long. Then he led me to another prophet and, um, and uh, a prophet that I follow, I really like. And she released a word and it was a word over Australia. And she felt inspired today to uh, speak this word that the, uh, we need to wake up. And, uh, and it was a word for Australia. So I, I played her word and unpacked her word as, as she spoke and made a, um, a prophetic word from her word. And it's a word she was getting for Australia. She didn't know who she was. I unpacked her word for the Australian church. Then, uh, then uh, I was called by the Holy Spirit to go again and look up certain scriptures that are being fulfilled in Australia now about the day of the Lord and release that and read those scriptures and show the Australian church that these scriptures are manifesting right now. And as you read those scriptures, as you manifest those scriptures, as you say, these are manifesting right now, that's the day of the Lord that these angels need. They can move on that. They can move on that word of the Lord. And because the prophet was speaking it, they can move on it. And uh, so those three prophecies will be indexed in, in the description tag of here. You can go down and watch those three prophecies. Always been fascinated by Saturday Sunday Silverage. So You'll say the angel of this, and the angel of this turned up, and he said this, and he said this, and this was his word. And you know, um, for someone who mixes with angels, 
um, and, and talks to angels and interacts with angels. Um, I'm always impressed with Sadhu because he, he sort of, you know, he's five times the encounters as me. And, you know, I don't know anyone in the world that has more encounters than me and then, then he's just like five times. Or so. But the difference between him and Stephen Powell, who seems to love himself, the guy who exposed Todd Bentley, when Stephen Powell talks about his uh, prophetic uh, encounters and, and angelic encounters, there's a lot of pride coming on. And, and it's all about what a great guy he is and what a great angel it is. And he's puffed that up so much that when the message comes out, it falls flat. Well, Sato Sunda Selvaraj, it's all about the message. You hear about the angel, but you listen to the message. And two years ago, he said, and I think I'm repeating myself here, two years ago, he said, if you, if you pass this same-sex marriage, God's going to pour out wrath in Australia. He said, blood in the water, uh, fires, bushfires, and uh, a major earthquake. And I don't know if he said Sydney, but there's been other prophets who, if you look up earthquake, Australia, you'll find there's going to be a major earthquake. So other prophets have spoken this and it's coming forth. I'm not saying it's coming forth tomorrow. I'm not saying it's coming forth in the next week. But, you know, Australia bushfire is going to go on for, I feel, for the next 90 days at least. Um, Israel Falal came forth and he said that Australia's under judgment. The Australian Prime Minister laughed at him and, and said, this doesn't represent the God the Christians serve. Well, he, he doesn't serve the Christian God, this uh, Pentecostal, charismatic, you know, so-called Prime Minister of Australia, Christian, or well, the Christians love him. He doesn't serve God. He serves the Illuminati. He serves the elite. He's doing the agenda of the elite. He's selling the water of Australia to China at the moment. The farmers are being driven off their land, begging. You know, yesterday there was a report with farmers going down to Canberra with trucks and a big appeal, and, and there's a woman talking on the news and she said we're on our knees we're begging please redistribute the water like we, we need the water and, and the Australian government isn't listening the government isn't listening we're being driven off our land and corporate people are coming in and buying our properties and and that's China China's coming to buy our land and do you think we're going to get the vegetables you know you're going to think we're going to get the best crops in Australia when China is sick and tired of importing our Australian crops but now they're just going to own them. And, uh, you know, the Illuminati is making moves on Australia. The Illuminati wants to take control of Australia. And the Australian church is just sitting back like pussies. And, uh, you know, just weak. You're weak, you know. You're weak. You know, can't come at me, 15,000 assassins. I can walk anywhere and I'm protected by means of angels. The only person getting in my face is someone God wants to get in my face. Someone did get in my face two weeks ago. He's going to be dead soon because of something that came out of my mouth. So I, um, I just encourage you to, uh, you know, go and listen to the prophecies I've released. If, if this has uh, aroused your curiosity, who is this guy? Who does he think he is? I'm an overweight, mentally ill, broken-hearted guy, but I've got 55 books that say, hey, I know what I'm talking about. And sadly enough that, they're not really written for the Christian church. When the book from John Lennon comes out and millions of people uh, read the book, uh, the 55 books is to disciple them on how to live the proper Christian life. They won't be going into normal churches. They'll be warned off churches and they'll be being discipled by those books and the churches I direct them to. And you think I'm crazy? Well, the Revelation 10 little book is that John Lennon book and how I know is they sent 15,000 assassins at me and I've got the evidence I've got two or three prophets that confirmed it but I would sound totally crazy Hosea 9 7 says I should sound crazy the times of judgment have come the prophet is a fool and the inspired men are maniac if you look that up in NIV you'll see that I'm a manic depressive I'm bipolar I'm inspired by the Holy Spirit I am a fool and I should look like a fool. You know, 1 Corinthians, 3, 1, Corinthians 1 says that, uh, you know, God uses the foolish things, the base things, the things of no reputation, the things that are crazy, the things that are stupid, the fools of this world, to confound the wise. And he doesn't use the learned, right? Jesus said, if, beware if all men speak well of you, uh, for so they did of the false prophets. And all the false prophets are leading the world. 
changing the world and talking and talking and talking. Peace, peace, peace. Revival, revival. There's no revival coming to Australia. There's no outpouring coming to Australia. There is nothing coming to Australia until the whole of Australia gets on their knees and weeps and says, pull this off up. What do we need to do to stop this? And the Australian church are just a bunch of pussies. They just let, let legislation like gay marriage just come in like there's, there's no problem. And, you know, half the Australian church actually voted for, for gay marriage, you know. Half, a, half the Australian church is so liberal that uh, they voted, you know. If the gays want to marry, let them marry. And, you know, half a, you know, a good percent, 50% of pastors are masturbating to porn. Um, and they're in the pulpit, they never talk about it, but they are statistically masturbating to porn. 70%, two out of three guys at church, if you've got three guys next to you at church, two of them are masturbating every night. How do I know that? Because I've had a huge addiction. I know these figures about things. You know, the church is wicked. The church is Revelation 18. She's disgusting. You need to come out of her. So there's some angelic uh, visitations that's happening in my life last night. Today, I released the word. And uh, if that's not enough word for them to go out on, I'll just continue to prophesy. And if, if you're looking at this, you know, on prophetic word for Australia and all these, you know, bad words are coming out by Matthew Robert Payne and Michael Benjamin Jacobson, you know, send them to your friends and have a good laugh about it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm just doing my best and I hope this will get someone's attention. I encourage you to uh, re watch the three prophecies. I encourage you to, uh, in some of the prophecies, I've got resources. Go and watch all the resources. And, and, you know, go and type in Matthew Robert Payne and have a look at my 55 books and say, hey, does that outstrip any pastor, you know? Like, does that information, does that, like, each of those books could be a thesis. Like, has anyone ever been more researched than this guy? Does he know what he is? Start reading the books. Hey, Read the parables of Jesus made simple. Read some of my books saying, hey, this guy seems like he's a real loving guy. He's a, he, we had to change his name, guys. We, we had to change Matthew's name. Uh, under, under grace of God, gift of God, Matthew, he couldn't do this. He has to be a Michael who is like God. He has to work with Michael. You know? has, to, has to bring down the wrath now. He has to be, be someone different. He had to change his name. People had to... Start calling him Michael. You have to manifest Michael. And uh, so uh, uh, please be encouraged that uh, Matthew Robert Payne's a, a, a wonderful guy. But, uh, you know, the church is obstinate. They're proud. They're rebellious. They can't even notice the Elijah that was prophesied in Malachi 4. They can't even see Elijah is speaking. It's so dumb. They're so stupid. They're so dead. They're so asleep. You know, it's the 12th hour. The, the sign is coming. The bridegroom's coming. The day of the Lord is here. No one can hear. No one can see. No one knows. No one. The trumpet is being blown. A lion is roaring, like Amos said. You know, if there's calamity in a city, has not the Lord sent it? Amos said. You know, you got all these fastidious prophets like Chris Valaton and Bill Johnson and Sean Boltz and all these Joseph Prince guys. They say there's no judgment anymore. All the wrath was poured out on Jesus. Well, you're going to see some wrath poured out on Australia. And, uh, you know, you're going to be on your knees soon saying, pull this away. And, you know, you'll be coming to the prophet eventually, whether it takes a year, eight and months, you'll be coming to the prophet who warned and warned and warned and warned. And you'll be saying, what do we need to do? And then there'll be drastic changes in Australia. And Australia will come into an alignment of the Great South Land and the Holy Spirit. You know, it was named by the French explorer, the Great South Land and the Holy Spirit. Smith Wigglesworth prophesied, said the great last movement of the, of the world is going to come out of Australia. You know, but, you know, guys, it's called Lucifer's country now. It's called the lucky country. The root word of luck is Lucifer. You know, you, you walk around saying Australia's the lucky country and you're confessing this is Satan's country. This is Satan's country. And it's not. You know, Jesus calls Sydney Sodom, but Sydney, I'm not leaving Sydney, guys. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave. It's going to come around behind us. And we can build this thing together, standing strong forever. Nothing's going to stop us now. And if the world comes down 
around us. We'll still have each other. Nothing's going to stop us now. My girlfriend lives in DY. We meet in Manly. I live in Croydon. Those three places are safe. That's the Goshen. You know, my friend lives in Penrith. You know, he'll know when to move on the days that he needs to move. But, you know, I can't see any other place in Sydney safe. And, uh, but, uh, you know, the people of the Lord, the remnant of the Lord, which is about 1% of the Christian church, they'll be safe. But, you know, everyone else is in danger. And, uh, you know, they could strip my pension. I could go without money and I could still live. You know, my gift can keep me alive. I, I hope uh, this hasn't hurt you too much. I hope that you'll go and do the research. Have a look at the other three prophecies. You know, in, when you see more in the description tag, tip on that and go and have a look at that. If, if this has concerned you, uh, share it with your friends. If you want to get in touch, my phone number, my email is there. If you want to invite me to your church, I doubt it, but if you want to invite me to your church, I'll come and speak at your church. I'm not going to charge you thousands of dollars. And it doesn't matter where you are in Australia, fly me there. And if you haven't got the money, you know, let me save up and I'll fly myself there. But don't underutilize me. Just don't put me on a stage for two hours, you know. I might be able to preach for eight hours or ten hours or a whole week or a whole month, you know. Don't waste my time. You know, I've wasted enough time. I've spent, you know, eight hours today, solid doing what the Holy Spirit has told me to do. There's no ego in this. There's no building my platform. I've still got Bob Jones's word saying, I'm not going to be full-time in ministry, uh, preaching for another 18 months. I understand that. He's true. It's right. And uh, so I don't expect that I'll be traveling around Australia preaching a lot. Uh, I, you know, if the RAF pours out for another 18 months, Australia's going to really be begging. And uh, so uh, I hope... Uh, this hasn't concerned you too much and uh, I love to look forward to your feedback.